Today's topic is logistic regression. So what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a standard classification machine learning algorithm. Logistic regression classifies the data into bins depending on the target column. So you could have red, blue, and green. The idea here would be that the target column, everything is red, blue, or green. Thumbs up or thumbs down. And most commonly, zero and one. So like linear regression, logistic regression finds weights for each column of data. Unlike linear regression, logistic regression splits the data in half. It's usually two separate bins, but as shown before, it could be three, and it could be more, but it's most commonly two. Logistic regression uses the sigmoid function to convert all outputs to zero or one. We'll look at that soon. Logistic regression is a classifier, not a regressor, even though it's called logistic regression. This is very confusing, but there's a history of regression lines, and the idea is that the data is regressing, kind of like moving toward the line, but the line could, in fact, be a curve. And as you'll see shortly, logistic regression uses a curve, okay? But there's a distinction in machine learning between classification, which is classifying data into two or very few values, and regression, which involves predicting usually a range of an infinite number of values. Okay. We'll talk about that more later. So let's look at the sigmoid equation, which is what logistic regression uses. So this is going to be a mathematical overview. Um, it's not essential for us, but for those of you who are interested in the theoretical side, let's definitely take a look at it. Okay, so there is the sigmoid function. Now this is a beautiful function. Take a moment to actually look at it. So first of all, it doesn't end where the red curve ends. There should be arrows there to indicate that the graph keeps going, okay? The equation is provided for you. It's one over one plus e to the negative t. Now, if you want to analyze this just a little bit, you could think about what happens in, th in three cases. What happens when you have zero, large t, and very small, or you should say very negative t. So let's look at zero. If you plug in zero, e to the zero is one. e is about 2.7, by the way. And so one over one plus one is one half, and that shows in the curve. When x is zero, y is one half. Now, imagine you have a really big value of t like, I don't know, a million. Well, you could even simplify e in this case to being a number about two. Well, what's two to the one million? Well, it's some gargantuan number. And if you put, wait, it's e to the negative t, okay? <laughs> so e to the negative t is one over e to the t. It's one over some gargantuan number, which makes e to the t become tiny, almost zero. So a large value of t will actually reduce to 1 over 1, which is 1. And a very negative value of t, then that's where you get the, if it's like negative 1 million, then it's 1 over 2 to the 1 million, 1 over some huge number, and it approaches 0. So this is a really beautiful equation. Okay, let's take a look at the positive x values, which are shaded in blue. The positive x values are mapped to class one. So the idea here is that everything to the right of the zero, everything in the red curve maps straight up to one. Now let's look at the negative x values. So similarly, the negative x values are all mapped to class zero. So everything that's to the left of zero on the red curve in logistic regression maps to class zero. And this is now, when I say the mapping, this is logistic regression. The sigmoid function is the curve. Logistic regression uses this curve to map it to zero or one. Now the x values in the middle, well, they have the greatest uncertainty. And it's still the case, hey, if they're greater than zero, map to one, less than zero, go to negative one. 
but they're, you know, they're a little more uncertain. And that's where probabilities can be used to interpret the output. So the sigmoid ranges from zero to one. Looking at the Y values here. And these values may be interpreted as probabilities. Okay, so let's look at that. This point is a Y value of 0 0.98, so there's a 98% probability it belongs to class one. Down over here, this point is a Y value of 0 0.2, so is there, there is a 20% probability it belongs to class one, and an 80% probability it belongs to class zero. Now this point is almost indeterminate, but it will be placed in class one since there's a probability of greater than 50% that it belongs in class one. All right, so if it's just, if it, anything positive is going to one, anything negative is going to zero. If it's snap, smack in the middle, I don't know what it does. I suppose you could go either way. Um, Okay, so let's take a quick look at how logistic regression works. Weights are randomly chosen to multiply each column. The sum of the weighted columns becomes the t-value. The t-value is placed in the sigmoid equation to map to 0 or 1. Now, t-value, I'm just using that because that's what that graph used. It could be any variable, okay? The point is you put it in the sigmoid and map it to 0 or 1. The percentage of correct predictions is returned. Weights are adjusted depending on the error using gradient descent. And another iteration continues. And the iterations continue until the error is minimized. Now let's look at logistic regression in code. From sklearn.linear model, import logistic regression. Yes, it's a curve, but linear here has a broader meaning. Model equals logistic regression. So you initialize the model. Now what you're gonna see is that the steps are virtually identical to linear regression. Model.fit the data on X and Y. And then score the data, model.score, parentheses X comma Y. And then you can bring in new data to make your predictions. So the steps are basically the same in linear regression. It's a different model, logistic regression. And most significantly here, the score is done differently because it is a classifier, not a regressor. So whenever you have a target column, which is the target, which is the column you are trying to predict as like just zero or one, yes or no, two or three values, you want to use logistic regression and it will be scored differently or another classifier. Okay. Let's do it in Colab Notebook.